Sadhu 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 Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Sadhu 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 Our homage to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, the Triple Gen. Sadhu Sadhu our respectful homage to our Guru Bhante, our teacher Bhante, Pinok Lukuswa Aminu Hansi. Sa. Sa. Here, Kalyanamittas. In the time of the Buddha, there was a poor man, very poor. He didn't even have a family. He didn't have a house. He didn't have good food to eat. He had nothing. And after his death, he was reborn to the second heavenly world, the Tavatinsa, the 33. The second heavenly world is called Tavatinsa. And the heavenly beings in the heavenly world came to see this new Devata. And they were surprised. This man, when he was in the human world, was very poor. He didn't even have food to eat. He didn't have any, any family, any clothes, any shelter, any medicine. He was very sick in the human world. You see, now he is a Devata, surpassing all the radiance of the Devas in the heavenly world. They became surprised. They were talking about this. See, it's a surprise or something. And then the King Sakka, the Lord of Devas, for the Two second, two heavenly words, the first and the second, came and said, Dear Devatas, dear deities, do not speak like that. Do not say that. Do not insult this noble person. Even though he was very poor when he was in the human world, even though he didn't have anything to eat, any family, any clothing, any shelter, he was rich with this five. The first, the faith. He really believed in the wisdom of the Buddha. He had a deep respect towards the Buddha about his understanding, about his realization. That was the first. And he never broke the precepts, the five, the virtue. No killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, no drugs and alcohol. Devotion's behavior is the second. And he had a very clear knowledge of Dhamma. This is what the Buddha said. This is all about the karma. You know about Dhamma? This is the nature of sansara. He had a very clear understanding. We call it the knowledge of Dhamma. In Pali, Sutta. Sraddha, the first one is called Sraddha, the faith. In Pali, we say Sraddha. O Sadda, Sadda, S A D D H A. The second, the virtue is called in Pali, Sile, S I L A, Sile. The third, knowledge of Dhamma is called Sutta, S U T A. And then the fourth, he was very generous. How does he practice generosity when he was very poor? He shared whatever he had with other people. Even though he was a beggar, he went from house to house to beg something to eat. He shared that food. Maybe if he sees a monk in, in the front of, maybe from the, from the opposite direction coming, he offered it. He had that very generous mind, which is called the generosity. In Pali, we say Chag. And then the fifth one, he had a very good understanding about this Dhamma, the arising and passing away of this world. This is how the, the reality works in the world. What the Buddha explained very clearly, he had that wisdom, maybe the concentration, the mind, he understood this reality. 
which is called wisdom in Pali. Panya, remember all these five. Sraddha is the faith. Sila is the virtue. Sutta is the knowledge of Dhamma, the very clear knowledge of Dhamma. Everybody, we need the very clear of not very clear knowledge of Dhamma. Only from the original word of the Buddha. Okay. All right. Number three is called Chaga, generosity. Huh? Number four is Chaga, the generosity. And then the fifth one is the wisdom, which is called Panya, Sadda, Sila, Sutta, Chaga, Panya. Can you memorize these five? Everybody after me, okay? Sadda, Sila, Sutta, Chaga, Panya. One more time. Sadda, Sila, Sutta, Chaga, Panya. Memorized? Can you? With me? All right. Number one. Sadda, Sila, Sutta, Chaga, Panya. What is Sadda? Faith. You will meet in the next lesson, okay? Sad Sadda is the faith. Sila is the virtue, the morality. Sutta is knowledge of Dhamma. Chaga is generosity. Panya, wisdom. So when he had these five, when he was in the human world, he was reborn in the heavenly world. And he was surpassing all the radiance of the other devatas in the heavenly world. So Sakka, the Lord of Devas, came and said, Do not insult. Even though he was very poor, he was very rich in the spirituality. What is this Sutta? Dalid, the poor man. What do we understand from this? From this story? From Dalid, the Sutta? It doesn't matter if you do not have anything here in the world. If you are rich with the spirituality, we are safe. We are always safe. The safety comes from, uh, not comes from the, uh, the material life. The safety and the protection never comes from the materiality, from the money. We need them actually, we need. We need all these things we use, but never gives us the perfect protection. What is the perfect protection we can get from our for our next life? Is the Dhamma. It's the Dhamma. Dhamma is the very, very safe way that we can practice. Do we actually need this? Hmm? Do we need the spirituality? Or we don't? We definitely need this. Why? If you believe in the wisdom of the Buddha, we have uh, a round of rebirths. We call it samsara. We have that round of rebirths. We are reborn again according to the karma. Karma ketang. Karma is the field. Vinyanam bija. The consciousness is the seed. The craving is the water. One more time. Karma ketang. Karma is the field. Feel for what? Feel for the seed. Vinyanang bijang. Consciousness is the seed. Tanhasinehu. Craving is the water. When we have these three, we grow the tree. We have the karma. We have the consciousness departs when we die. And we have the craving. Craving for the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, and mind. Craving. And then we grow the tree. It could be somewhere. Maybe in the same human world. Like, who decides this? The sucker? Sucker doesn't decide our ne next place. Our parents? The king? <laughs> the government? No one. No one can decide the next place, right? Who decides? 
our own run. But we can change this. This is the lesson we learn, everybody. We call it Sankaru Papati Sutta. Sankaru Papati Sutta. Right? Rebirth by choice. Right? In this sutta, the Buddha clearly explained that we can plan our next life. With the help of Dhamma, oh, I didn't share my screen. I'm sorry, everybody. Sankaru Papati Sutta. Rebirth by choice. Maybe you can plan. You can plan your next destination if you have these five. We'll see, okay? Where would you like to go? My first question. Next time. All right. If you believe in your rebirth, oh, yes, I would uh, be born in Israel. Maybe in India, Indonesia, Malaysia, in Germany, here. How and why? Why should have that perfect and clear decision that we should go? If you okay? Oh, I long time ago I was playing here. So what? In general, bro, I'm not looking at the cards. I'm lost. There the Buddha addressed the mendicants. Mendicants. Whether it was very verified, the Buddha said this. I will teach you rebirth by choice. Listen and apply your mind well. I will speak. Yes, sir, they replied. The Buddha said this. Take a mendicant, a mendicant has faith, ethics, learning, generosity, and wisdom. They think. If only when my body breaks off after that, I will be reborn in the company of well-to-do aristocrats. They settle on that thought, stabilize it and develop it. But if those choices and meditations of theirs develop and cultivate and cultivate like this, deep to rebirth there. This is the path and the practice needs to rebirth there. So in this paragraph, you understand the Buddha very clearly explained. If you have these five, these are actually called the Seka Balan. Seka is the training rules. A trainee should have these five rules. Bala is the power. That will be the power of yourself. Okay. Number one is faith. In Pali, Sadda. S A D D H A. Number two, ethics which is called the morality, or seal it. As a layperson, you have five precepts. Maybe on your special days, you observe eight precepts, right? All right. This is not something simple, huh? It's a huge thing in your life. It's very, very, very powerful. Number three, learning, or you say knowledge of Dharma. In Pali, Chaga, C H A G A. Oh, excuse me. Sutta, S U T A. S U T A, Sutta, knowledge of them. Sutta is actually the hearing. In the time of the Buddha, all the time people heard this Dhamma, not, re not read. They didn't read, they just heard the Dhamma, okay? Listened. Learned, that's why they said that learning, anyways. But we read, we listen, and uh, many ways we have. Number four, chaga, generosity. Chaga, C-H-A-G-A. And then the, the fifth, wisdom, panya. How do you spell panya in Pali? P-A-N-N-A. -N, -N, N has that uh, curve. Uh, panya. Uh, the curve panya. Can you pronounce that word panya? panya. Not panna. Panya. 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 Panya is the wisdom. Okay. And when you have these five, when you have these five, you 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 are on the path of your spirituality. You have a clear practice. Panya is actually the meditation, mindfulness meditation and practice, wise consideration. Try to understand, letting go of something. And you, you have seen the people 
in maybe in royal families, very rich, very comfortable lifestyle they have. Okay, maybe they are very educated, they are very beautiful, luxurious, or whatever. Maybe from royal families or whatever. And you will like to be born in a family like that. So the Buddha is very clearly explained. If only when my body breaks up after death, I would be reborn in the company of well-to-do aristocrats. The royal families? Okay. They, and then everybody, you see three things here. They settle on that thought, number one. Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhibhante says, this is the translation, this is from uh, Sujato Bhante, okay? Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhibhante says, translates, he fixes his mind. He fixes his mind. The, Sujato Bhante says, settle, they settle their thought, okay? And this is number one. Number two, the second step. They establish it. What is it? Stabilize it. Stabilize it means the mind, the thought, okay? Bhante Bodhi says, revolves upon it. And the third is develop. He developed it. These are the three steps actually they do. They settle their mind in a family like that. And they stabilize their mind in the family and they develop their mind. And then those choices of meditation of theirs developed and cultivated like this lead to rebirth there. This is the path and practice that leads us to rebirth there. Did you understand that? So we have a practice here. The first thing is you need to have these five spiritual practices, which is called uh, the Sekabala. What is the first? Sadda. Second, Sila. The third, Sutta. The fourth, Nagati. Anya. In English, faith, morality, the learning, the knowledge of Dhamma. And then the fourth, the generosity. And then the fifth, wisdom. And when you have this enough, you have a thought to be born in a good family. And then you will like it. The first, you settle your mind. You, you settle your mind there. Or oh, this is my next place or something. I'm happy to be born in uh, British ro royal family. And then you, you establish your mind there. Eh? Stabilize, stabilize your mind. And you develop it. And then Buddha clearly says, you have that common ketan. You have that common. What is common? Yeah. When you practice these five, you collect karma. Giving is a karma. Faith is a karma. Good karma, right? And virtue is a karma. And learning Dhamma is a karma. Good karma. Meditation is a good karma. You have that karma. Karma Ketan. Vinyanam Bija. You have that consciousness that you have given a command. And you have you have settled that mind somewhere. Right? Like the seed. Vinyanam Bida and Tanhasiniho. You have that desire to be born there. And you will be born there. Those choices of meditations develop and cultivate. This leads to rebirth there. This is the path you can have if you like to be born in a family like that. Maybe, maybe not a royal family, maybe in a very big mansion. You can do that. How? With the price of these five. I think uh, the idea is clear, right? What if you have a plan to come to this human world next time? Yes. This is my next chance. Then I will come to this human world to be born in a very rich family. Is it a good idea? Or maybe what? Yes, I need my next rebirth in Toronto. We like it, right? We all like. That's why we came here, everybody. We came from different different countries to this country to have a better life. But if we come to, to Canada next time too, 
I will show you why this is Chakravarti Sihanadi Sutta. What will happen to the human world in the future? If you come next time to the human world again, for example, to be born in Toronto, this is what you experience. This is from Chakravarti Sihanadi, the monarch. From Diganikai, the long discourses, the Buddha explained, okay? And so, mitigants, from not providing money to the penniless, all these things became widespread. Poverty, death, swords, killing, lying, backbiting, sexual misconduct, hard speech, talking nonsense, desire, ill will, wrong view, illicit desire, immoral greed, and wrong custom, lack of due respect for mother and father. Ascetics and plans, and failure to honor the elders of the family. For the sentient beings among whom these things are widespread, their lifespan and beauty decline. Those people who lived for 250 years and children who lived for 100 years. This is what happened in the, in the history of the human world. I actually invite you to read this beautiful sutta, Chakravati Sihanada, and get the perfect and clear idea about what happened in the history. Okay? This is only one paragraph. The monarch king did not provide enough money to the people. And then the people started stealing because they were they were getting poor and poor. And then this is the first precept that in the history the people brought. The decline happened in this human world because of the poverty. The monarch did not provide enough money to the poor people. Read this clear sutta, okay? But the most important part of this sutta is this. In the future, this is what happened to us. If you come back to the human world in your next life, this is what you experience. The people's lifespan will decline to 10. 10 years. 10 years from 80,000. Earlier, the lifespan of this human world, human world was 80,000 years declined until a hundred. Now we do not live for a hundred actually. When the Buddha was born in this world, the lifespan of the human world was 120. Now we don't have that much of lifespan. Why not? The drawback of the, the good qualities of the people gives us this bad situation, okay? In the future, this will become worse and worse and worse. We'll read, okay? When people live for 10 years, this will decline for 10 years. It's not a place. You might experience many, many things today that we have the shadows of the future, okay? When people live for 10 years, there will be a time that becomes when these people will have children who live for 10 years. Among the people who live for 10 years, girls will be marriageable at five. The following flavors will disappear. Ghee, butter, oil, honey, molasses, and salt. The best kind of food will be finger millet. Just as fine rice with meat is the best kind of food today. Sandu, Sandu. I think we have that uh, signs. So people cannot eat ghee, butter, oil, honey. Molasses is the syrup. Huh? Sugar cane syrup, salt. We reject. That is not good for the health. And we highly speak about kuraka in Singhal. We highly speak about the fiber not like ghee, honey. People cannot eat. So the Buddha said this. Those people will not even have the word still food, still less anyone who does what is still food. If anyone who disrespects mother and father, the subjects and families who fails to bond on the hours in the family will be renovated and increased, just as the August is renovated today. This will happen in the future. 
the respect will disappear to mother and father. The skillful, the, we say, the kusala will disappear from the people, okay? We see that today. We, we see that it's a huge thing. Why do we learn this? We should be aware about the, the dangers that we can face in the future, right? When we are aware about the things that we experience in the future, we can assist with the help of Dhamma. That's why we are learning. Not to like to be alarmed. Not to get scared. Oh yeah, this is the future we have or something. We don't want to get scared about this. Why? We have a solution. This is the Dhamma. When we do not know about this, we will definitely face such a terrible thing in the future. All right. This is not something very bad. This is what you see. That's like hair standing on end. There will be no recognition of the status of mother, aunts, or wives and partners of teachers and respected people. The world will become dissolute like goats and sheep, chickens and pigs and dogs and jackals. They will be full of hostility towards each other and acute ill will, malevolence, and thoughts of murder. Even a mother will feel like this for her child and the child for its mother, father for child, child for father, brother for sister, and sister for brother. It will be just like a deer hunter when he sees the deer, full of hostility, ill will, malevolence, and thoughts of killing. Among the people who live for 10 years, there will be an interregnum of stores lasting seven days. During that time, they will see each other as beasts. Sharp swords will appear in their hands, with which they'll take each other's life, crying, it's a bit, it's a beast. This is what the Buddha explained in Chakravati Sihanan Sutta. So in the future, there will be no compassion, no kindness towards anybody, towards their children from the mother, father, from the children for their mother and father, completely done. They will have a very dangerous time period. They will have weapons. When they need a weapon, the weapon will come to their hand. How do we see this? So maybe it is not from the Buddha because of the development of the technology. This can happen. When they think about a weapon, they might have a weapon in their hand. That's what the Buddha said, okay? Did you see that? And then there will be a time period for seven days will become a very serious battle. Many, many people will die. This is the future that we are going to face. So when it comes to the, the previous sutta, Sankarupa Pati Sutta, the, on account of rebirth, it will not be the idea to come back to the human world. What do you say, Ben? It will not be a good idea. Even though you see something very beautiful here, in the human world, there are something very bad dangerous, hidden. I think you know better than me about the, the well-developed technology or something. So we do not have well-to-do families in the future, in the human world. Please let go the idea to come back to the human world. And the most importantly, not to enjoy a comfortable life here, that we should come to the human world. It's not the ba it's not the main idea. Oh yes, we will have uh, very good food. We will have a good environment. The air will be very fine. It is not. We will not meet Dhamma. When we will not meet Dhamma, when we do not have Dhamma, what will happen to our next life? Do we practice and collect merit? No. Then the next life will be very dangerous and very harmful, maybe in a very wor worst world, okay? Not in the human world back, maybe, maybe very worse, okay? Than the human world, maybe like in the animal world. Would you like to go to the animal world next time? Or maybe after this, after next life? No, we never like. Why not? 
they have no any chances to collect merit to practice. They suffer a lot. Even in the winter, have you seen the animals? All right. Then what can we do? The Buddha explains something very interesting that you can plan your next life. And in the other hand, Buddha explained about the nature of this human world. If you are wise enough to understand these two, the nature of the history, and you have a good plan, you should be wise enough to understand and plan. All right. Again, we are in the Sankaru Pati Sutta. Furthermore, take a medicine who has faith, ethics, learning, generosity, and wisdom. They think if only when my body breaks up after that, I would be reborn in the company of well to do Brahmins, well to do householders. They settle on that thought, stabilize it, and develop it. Those choices and meditations of theirs developed and cultivated like this lead to rebirth there. This is the path and the practice that leads to birth there. So the first one is in the royal family. The second one is in the well-to-do Brahmin's family. And then third one is where to do householders' family. Those three chances are only in the human world. We can let that go, okay? And then the next one, what is the next actually? Furthermore, take a mendicant who has faith, ethics, learning, generosity, and wisdom. And they have, they have heard, the gods of the four great kings are long lived, beautiful, and very happy. They think, if only when my body breaks up after death, I will be reborn in the company of the gods of four great kings. They settle on that thought, stabilize it, and develop it. Those choices and meditations of meditations of theirs, developed and cultivated like this, lead to rebirth there. This is the path and the practice that leads to rebirth there. This is the next plan you can have. What is it? To go to the first heavenly world. You know, there are four great kings living there, ruling the country. But the ruler is Sakka. Sakka is the ruler for those two heavenly worlds, the first and the second. These are called, this is called Chatu Maharaja. Do you know the lifespan of this heavenly world? 50 years in the human world is a day in the Chatu Maharaj Kemali world. How many day, How many years? 50. If you are 50, huh? if you are 50 years old, it's one day. It's a day in the Chatu Maharaj Kemali world. If two people are born like with you, you are 50, and that Deva is 52. 50? No, just one day. All right. And they have. 500 years to live. This is not the only benefit we have. So we have a very short lifespan in the human world today, not like in the history, in the past. In the future, that will be very bad. So the day here, how do we hear from the heavenly world? How do we know about the heavenly worlds? Only from the Dhamma. We have no any information coming from the heavenly worlds. They don't come and they said, this is our heavenly world. You, they, 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 we don't have that, right? Only from the Dhamma we see the information about the heavenly worlds. So you need that Dhamma again. This is called, again, the Sutta. You need that Sutta. The learning of clear Dhamma. Okay? You, you learn the, the, the gods of four great kings are long lived beautiful and very happy and you do the same thing you settle your mind you stabilize your mind and you develop it we will talk about these three a little more later and with the power of this sekabala again sada is the faith sila is the virtue sutta is the knowledge of dhamma and chaga 
is the generosity and panya is the wisdom and you have plan yes my next destination is the first heavenly world karma does this when you have established your mind in the first heavenly world next time when you release your last breath here you will take your next breath in the heavenly world you have no any time gap is that happy or bad furthermore take a mendicant who has faith ethics learning generosity and wisdom and they have heard the gods of the 33 the gods of yama the joyful gods the gods who love to create the gods who control the creation of others are long lived beautiful and very happy they think if only when my body breaks up after death, I would be reborn in the company of the gods who control the creations of others. They settle on that thought, stabilize it and develop it. Those choices and meditations of theirs developed and cultivated like this lead to rebirth there. This is the path and the practice that leads to need to rebirth there. This is actually a repetition when it comes to the first part. So the furthermore, take a mendicant who has faith, maybe to a bhante, okay? Buddha, ex Buddha is explaining to for a bhante. So if a bhante has these five, faith, ethics, learning, generosity and wisdom, and they heard they have heard about the second heavenly world, the gods of 33. And from, from this on, you have the repetition, okay? And this is the next step you can take. What is it? The second heavenly world. Oh, no. Remember, for the first heavenly world and the second heavenly world, Saka was the ruler. He has a very beautiful mansion, which is called Vaijayanta Prasada. Out of merit, he has this, okay? And there is a huge Dharmashala. Dharmashala is the meditation hall called Sudhamma or Sudhamma or Sudharma, right? Sudharma or Sudhamma or Sudhamma Council Hall, which is like 500 yojanas long. In your words, you say about 6,000 kilometers long and wide. When you get there, you will get a seat. And there is a beautiful stupa in the second heavenly world. You know the name? Silumini Saya. Silumini Chetia. The Buddha's hair is enshrined. And then the one tooth is there too. Before the enlightenment, Buddha cut his hair. The Bodhisattva cut his hair. And throw that to the sky. And that came to this heavenly world. And Sakka, in a casket, he placed the, those hairs. And... Uh, created that beautiful stupa you can worship next time and also there is a tree called parichatka or parasatu we have that parichatka sutta it's a different sutta and in that sutta the very clearly explained about that tree they have three seasons one is for the, the spring they they enjoy the beautiful weather or something if you go there to the second heavenly world, you will be welcomed by the heavenly beings. And not only for the heavenly pleasures, heavenly happiness, by body, speech, and mind, okay? But to practice Dhamma. This is, this is the Jana Vasabha Sutta from Majjimanikaya. Jana Vasabha, it was a king. Do you remember the name of that king in the human world? Bimbisara, King Bimbisara. King Bimbisara was a very faithful disciple of the Buddha and was born in this world and he became a guardian deva and he came to the Buddha and explained about the heavenly world. How do they practice them? We will have a quick look at this, okay? From the Iganikaya, from local courses, okay? Janavasabha Sutta is from the Iganikaya. Next, 
What is plain learning and what is plain less? What should be cultivated and what should not be cultivated? What is inferior and what is superior? And what is on the side of the right, on the side of right? After some time, they hear the teaching of the noble ones, rationally apply the mind to how it applies to them, and practice accordingly. They truly understand what is skillful and what is unskilled, and so on. Nobody can see like this. Ignorance is given up and knowledge arises. That gives rise to pleasure and more than pleasure. Happiness by the joy that is born from blood. This is a third opportunity for achieving happiness. When you are born there, are... The Janavasabha, the Devata, explains to the Buddha coming from the heavenly world about these kind of things. Maybe we go there with a little bit of merit, powerful, but we, we are not developed with, we, have, we don't have a developed wisdom here. But when you get there, you will have that power to develop your wisdom. See, this is skillful, this is unskillful. You have a very clear mindfulness. Because the devatas are different from humans. When you get the opportunity, you will get this opportunity as an extra benefit. What do you say? Okay? And then this will give you more opportunities to practice and understand. In this way, you understand the capability of their realization is bigger than the humans. We try this. We try this a lot. We, we try to meditate, but we have capacity and our development is very little and slow. Why? Because we have so much of distractions from the family, from the physical pain sometimes. We have so much to take care of in the human world. And so much of different things we hear, right? We don't have very much support to practice this Dhamma in the human world. This is very different from the heavenly world. All right. We, we go furthermore. And uh, this is actually very interesting. Uh, These are the three opportunities for achieving happiness that have been understood by the people. That is the topic in which Rahman Tani Sano Kamara spoke in heaven spoken about that. Right. Brahma Saman, Sanan Kumara comes from the Brahma world, high divinities, to what? To say hi? <laughs> to teach Dharma. This is what he explained. Sanan Kumara, the Brahma, comes to the heavenly world, the 33 Tava things in the meditation hall called Sudhamma, creates the same Dhamma for the heavenly beings to understand. Consciousness and his pleasure for him. As we meditate with him, we become rightly immersed in that and rightly speed. Then we give rise to the knowledge and sentient of our future bodies externally. We meditate observing in the sight feelings differently. Then we give rise to knowledge and sentient other people's feelings excellent. We meditate observing the respect of the mind eternal. And we give wise to knowledge in meaning other people's minds externally. We meditate observing the respect of principles internal, key, aware and mindful, we of consciousness and desire for the world. As we meditate in this way, we become rightly immersed in that and rightly submit. Then we give rise to knowledge and vision, other people's principles, external. 
these are all kinds of mindfulness meditation taught by the Buddha for achieving what is sustainable. Do they talk about anything, uh, anything like unnecessary? No. The Brahmas are coming to the heavenly worlds to teach the same Dhamma, not anything different from the Dhamma explained by the Buddha. The same Dhamma, because they are someone who understood this Dhamma to a certain level. They help you, they welcome you, okay? I want you to actually read uh, that Sutta too. Uh, maybe if we get another chance, we can talk about this Janavasabha Sutta fully, okay? It's a very beautiful sutta. Janavasabha Sutta is all about the human level, how they practice their Dhamma. When you get there, you will you will be very fortunate to realize actually your capability is very good, okay? And what if you think about yourself like maybe I am too attached to this th uh, this world, maybe I will be lost in the heavenly world too. If I have so much of desire to this human world, to the food, to the people or sometimes. If I go there, the heavenly places are so powerful and fine, I will be lost. I will be misled or something. You might have this open ideas, right? Even though the humans, for example, human body is very different from the devas bodies, right? The devas can smell a hundred yojanas away from the human world, the stink, stink of the human, human bodies. Stinkiness, the human bodies. Yes, hundred yojanas they feel. But they come to the human world, regardless of that stink, stinkiness, if, if you practice Dhamma. Okay, when you have Dhamma, they come. Very different everybody, this is the truth. Maybe when you get there, you will see so many beautiful devas. You will be attached to them too. But don't worry, okay? This is Nandana Sutta, the garden of delight. From linked discourses, the connected discourses, it's very short. So I have heard, at one time, the Buddha was staying near Savati in Jeta school, another Pindicus monastery. There, are, uh, there the Buddha addressed the mendicants. mendicants. Venerable sir, they replied. Buddha then sa uh, said this. Once upon a time, mendicants, a certain deity of the company of 30, 33 uh, was amusing themselves in the Garden of Delight, escorted by a band of uh, nymphs and supplied by, uh, and provided with the five kinds of heavenly sensual stimulation. On that occasion, they recited this verse. They don't know pleasure. Who don't see the Garden of Delight? It's the uh, abode of lordly gods, um, the glorious host of thirty. When they had spoken, another deity replied with this verse. He actually was lost, huh? They don't know the pleasure. Who don't see the Garden of Delight. Garden of Delight is the Nandana Park, the name, okay? Nanda is one of the wives of Bodhisattva. Because of the merit of Nanda, the Nandana Park was manifested in the, the heavenly world, okay? In the Nandana Park, the Delight Park, enjoying the pleasures with other deities, he said this. They don't know the pleasure. They don't know pleasure. Who don't see the Garden of Delight, it's, it's the abode of lordly goods, the glorious host of Freddy. He was overwhelmed by the happiness and joy. He lost his mindfulness about the happiness, the pleasure. But this is what happened to him. When they had spoken, another deity replied with this verse. Fool, don't you understand the saying of the perfected ones? All conditions are impermanent. Their natures to rise and fall. Having a reason, they cease. Their stealing is true bliss. I want you to explain about that to me. That deity was lost actually. When he was enjoying the pleasures in the heavenly world, he said, oh, this is wonderful. Everybody should 
enjoy this heavenly happiness somebody came and said this fool you don't understand the saying of the perfected ones all conditions are impermanent what is this going on you have a noble friend there to open your eyes you have a kalyanamitta there not like in the human world accidentally you can be lost you might say that this is amazing this is my place please enjoy everybody should enjoy this happiness you have a kalyanamitta comes to you and says something to open your eyes we don't have that opportunity here in him when you go to a party there are so many people to give you a glass see they speak the real word of the buddha fool directly he said my friend he didn't say that hey fool don't you understand the saying of the perfected ones all conditions are impermanent don't be lost don't lose your mindfulness in the heavenly world everything is subject to impermanence you have a noble friend there to open your eyes okay this is out of compassion he says fool their nature is to arise and fall having arisen they cease their stillness is the is the true bliss see the true happiness not this heavenly happiness right you everywhere you go you have support you get the support all right did you get the the, the real message everybody this is the perfect place if you select your next life okay this actually takes a uh, time to explain everything but the main message was from the sankara upati sutta sankara upati sutta you have faith precepts and clear knowledge of dhamma that which should be very clear okay not going here and there looking for some dharma this might be right this might be wrong please let that go directly come to this the original word of the buddha okay do not try reading many many teachings many many things will lose the opportunities right read only the word buddha explain and that's it that would be clear that would be not like mm, very close to your ideas maybe the buddha's buddha's dhamma is you might feel that is a, a little far away from your ideas from your view point don't worry you will get your chance to understand you will get your time to understand what the buddha explained keep reading the original word okay and then be confident about your learning of the dhamma about the karma about rebirth about the four noble truths about mindfulness about aggregates of clinging about the paticca samuppada read and learn everything the buddha explained okay and then this is called the learning or, or sutta and then the next is generosity practice giving this is an investment this is not something you lose and is invest giving is an invest you save your money in a, in an account and you use maybe with lots of interests remember the first story we shared from the dalinda sutta that poor man he was a beggar very weak very patient and very painful he had he screamed in on the street and then the in the countries we see people never sleep at night because of his cry to the top of his lungs he cried in pain that's how he suffered even though he had these five what faith precepts knowledge of dhamma chaga giving he gave something he begged to the bhantis and wisdom capability to understand the dhamma wisdom and then when you have a kind of background with this 
go to the next level. What is the next level? This is the plan actually, okay? They settle on the thought, stabilize it and develop it. Settle the thought means our mind is settled here in the human world. Penetrated in the human world, in the people, in the food, in restaurants, maybe uh, whatever, maybe in the money in the lands, in the properties, in the cars, many beautiful things. Our mind is like, we have roots. We need this, we like it, we enjoy it. But we are not, we do not have that settled mind in a place that we plan to go next time. How do we settle this mind to the next level? We should let our mind go from this world and, and we should establish our mindfulness there. How? What is the key that we can use here? How do we let go of the desire to this human world? It is all about Dhamma. The practice of the perception of impermanence. When we understand the impermanence in this world, someone can let go of this desire and can establish. There is a beautiful sutta called Gilana Sutta, if you remember, ill. There are a few Gilana Suttas. In that Gilana Sutta, Buddha explains to Mahanama, Mahanama, encourage other people to let go of the desire to your family. Desire means like it is not the, the anger or something. The attachment and establish your mind in the next, next level, in the heavenly world. If you go to the next heavenly world, let go of that settled mind and establish in the 33. Likewise, he explains to the Brahma world. All right. We need two things to do here. Number one is understanding the impermanent is the way that we can let go. Unless we are very attached to things. We do not settle our mind in a Tava things a heavenly world. We cannot do that. Why? Our, we have our roots here. Not settled. Even though you have developed these five kinds of things, Sadda, Sila, Sutta, Tyagapanya, your mind will not go there because you, you have not settled your mind there. You are settled. Your mind is settled here. And then the second thing you need is Metta, loving kind. To let go of the anger, resentment, and maybe dislike. Unless you have that attachment with the anger. Right? We have these two attachments actually. These are two attachments. Desire and likes and dislikes we have. That's the roots we have here. In both ways we have roots here. When we practice impermanence and then the loving kindness, we can let go of this. The letting go of like the developing the impermanence to this world is not like you angry. You're angry with the people. I don't need you. Uh, it is not, okay? You need the other hand too. What is it? Loving Christ. Then your mind becomes spiritual. You can easily say goodbye to things and you can settle your mind there. And a uh, it's there, which is like you do not take your mind back. Then you study about the second heavenly world, Tava things. This is the ruler, Sakra. This is the meditation hall, Sudhamma. This is the, the beautiful stupa, Selumini. This is the Parichattaka tree. This is the place the Buddha preached the Abhidhamma to his mother Deva. Remember? These are the things. This is the Nandana Vyana, the Nandana Park. These are my Kalyana Mittas, everybody. They don't have jealousy. They don't have anger. They don't have any craving. They don't have fences. They don't have surveillance cameras. They don't have thieves to steal your things. No. They don't have pandemics. They don't have mortgages. They don't have traffic jams. They don't have heart attacks, blood pressures, sugar diseases. No, 
they don't have families they don't want to go to schools to graduate nothing what do they have they have a spot in the uh, the sudama council hall to listen to the dhamma from sanankum or the brahman the differences between the human world the future in the human world and then the opportunities you get in the next world how it is not rocket science it is not like brain surgery it is the dhamma it is the dhamma you practice and will plan and understanding you will get so much of opportunities if you go there next time you have more chances to come to the first level of understanding this what i want unless how can we understand this dhamma in this human world in the human world next world maybe after after 2500 years dhamma will completely disappear from the world we have no dhamma we have no statues you have no bandhas we have no robes we have nothing to me even the word of buddha even the word of dhamma everything will disappear in the human world in the future if you come back to the human world even if you are born in sri lanka you will not hear any word all right no chances when will we hear the dhamma from the next buddha huh when millions of trillions of years after the buddha metta you will come to this world and will preach the same noble truths the dhamma but how much time do you want to wait it is not a good idea it is not a good plan to listen to the same dhamma from the next buddha we have our supremely enlightened buddha here is the same dhamma he explains too we have the same dhamma right now we don't want to wait such a long time being born in the hell in the animal world in the ghost world suffering when we have that capability to understand the real thing that we want to that we are going to experience we should definitely have this plan why this is what our teacher bante pinot loku swami nasi always explains to people to practice practice these five deeply and have your plan you will get the chance to understand in your next life unless you will have to suffer a lot we don't know about our bad karmas accumulated in our previous lives coming behind us who knows when we meet this dhamma right now make this your whole plan you will not be lost when will you have these five things with you you will never go to bad realms next time why not it's powerful even though you can plan to be born in wherever you like maybe i i was talking about the second heavenly world there are the third the fourth the fifth and sixth there are six heavenly worlds what if you go to the second that's completely enough enough for the purpose what if you go to brahma world it's a better idea but this is enough the second is enough to be very honest but you understand don't come back to the human world that's the main idea and then the first is not that the second is the best best place to understand all right did you get the idea okay and if you develop these five qualities the sekha bala see the buddha at the end explains furthermore take a mendicant who has faith ethics learning generosity and wisdom they think if one day i might realize the unrequited freedom of heart and freedom and and freedom by wisdom in this very life and live having realized my own insight due to the ending of the five months They realize the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life. 
They live having realized it their own insight due to the ending of five minutes. Mendicants, that mendicant is not born. This is what the Buddha said, satisfied mendicants of the Buddha. These five training rules, the Seika Bala, they are very powerful. If you practice fully, you will complete your journey right here, right now. Which is so powerful, all right? If you don't want to be born in the human world, in a heavenly realm, or in a Brahma realm, you can finish your journey right now. If you plan, you can plan that too. What is the best plan though? This is the first main basic idea. As a Buddhist, as a practitioner, this is the main idea. What is it? The perfect realization of Nibbana. To understand that perfect Nibbana, we, you need that background around you. You need Kalyanamitas, you need Dhamma, you need a good environment to practice. For example, you need a car to come to the monastery. But if you do not have a car, you need a computer if you want to read, for example. Right? You need good food to practice this Dhamma. Good environment is this. And you need a serenity. Maybe in a war country, a battlefield, you cannot practice Dhamma. Right? You need that surrounding. Likewise, you in your next life too, you need that background. The support from the outside world. The Kalyanamitas, sharing Dhamma, and comfortable lifestyle. Not with the heavy mode. Heavy birds disturbs you, not with the, the other people very mean to us. It is not the hate, okay? You need that both things again the perception of impermanence and loving kindness. Unless you're lost again, it's not the practice, it's not spiritual. Does that make sense? Yes. If you catch Dhamma, like developing anger or something, it's not the perfect practice, no? So I say goodbye to everybody, and next next destination mine is the second heavenly world. These are just words, no? Authenticity. We need this, okay? If you practice actually these five, everything includes to these five, okay? The noble path. The Noble Eightfold Path is completely included in this one. The path is the Noble Eightfold, the Noble Path, okay? Eight kinds of noble steps. That is the only practice, okay? In these five, you have, you have that, everything. Okay, you have the perfect Dhamma. You have seal, you have done the giving in the Noble Eightfold Path. And in the wisdom you have, in faith also includes to the wisdom, faith, virtue, generosity, and uh, learning of them. Everything together, e everything connected each other, right? All right. Don't get confused about this. Learn clear Dhamma. Buddha explained so much of things in different kinds of viewpoints. But there's the same goal, Nibbana. Only one goal. To go to that goal, you can practice as you're comfortable with. All right. So, it is the Mahanama Sutta. In this Mahanama Sutta, Buddha explained how to practice Devata Nusati. It is a meditation. Devata Nusati is the recollection of the Devatas. It's a meditation, okay? Furthermore, you should recollect the Devatas. They are the first of the four great kings. The devas of the 33, the devas of the hours, the contented devas, the devas who delight in creation, the devas who have power over the creations of ours, the devas of the Brahma's retinue, the devas beyond them, whatever conviction they were endowed with them. When falling away from this life, they re arose there. The same sort of conviction is present in me as well. Whatever virtue they will endow with that when falling away from this life, 
there re arose them. The same sort of virtue is present in me as well. Whatever learning they will endow with that, when falling away from this life, they re arose them. The same sort of learning is present in me as well. Whatever generosity they will endow with that, when falling away from this life, they re arose them. The same sort of generosity is present in me as well. Whatever discernment they will endow with that when falling away from this life, they re arose them. The same sort of discernment in present is in me as well. At any time when disciple of the noble ones is recollecting the conviction, learning, generosity, and discernment found both of in himself and the devas. His mind is not overcome with passion, not overcome with aversion, not overcome with delusion. His mind has straight based on the qualities of the devas. And when the mind is headed straight, the disciple of the noble one gains a sense of the group, gains a sense of dharma, gains joy, joy connected with dharma. In one is joyful, rapture arises. In one who is rapturous, the body grows calm. One whose body is calm experiences ease. In one at least, the mind becomes concentrated. Maha Nama. You should develop this recollection of the devas while you are walking, while you are standing, while you are sitting, while you are lying down, while you are busy at work, while you are resting in your home crowded shooting. What is it all about? You know the devatas or the devas, the heavenly beings, are born in the heavenly worlds. For example, the 33 devas, the Tava things the devas, they had these five qualities for them to be born in the heavenly world. Number one, Sadda, the faith. Number two, virtue, the seal. Number three, Sutta, the knowledge of them. Number four, Chaga, the generosity. Number five, Panya, the wisdom. Because of the power of these five, they are reborn in the heavenly world. I do have the same. As the Tava thinks they were had, Sraddha in their mind, in the same way, I have Sraddha in me too. They became virtuous to be born in the Tava in the heavenly world. As they had that seal, the virtuous behavior, I practice my precepts too. When they have learned this Dhamma very clear, very, very pure Dhamma, because of that power, they were reborn in the Tao things in the world. I do have the same knowledge of Dhamma here and now. If, when they have practiced the generosity, giving and sharing and making merit, because of that power, they were reborn in the Tao things in the world. I do have the same quality right now. They practiced the wisdom, the Panya, meditating, contemplating the Dhamma in this human world, because of the power they were reborn in the Tao things in heaven. I do have the same power of Panya, the wisdom right now. When you do that meditation, thinking about the only one, okay? There are many, many levels, repetitions you have, but you select one. What is it? The second heavenly world, the beings, okay? Thinking about the second heavenly world and the Devas, you compare your qualities and Devas qualities when you practice this meditation, your mind becomes concentrated, settled, calm, and peaceful. Mahanama. The Buddha is giving this Dhamma talk to Mahanama. You should practice this all the time. This is how you establish your mindfulness in the heavenly world. Breaking up this body after death, you will reappear there in no time. Sam. So, so.